What is going on, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome to another episode of No Holds Barred Wrestling Podcast. I am your host, the greatest host, Kyle Masters. As always, I do apologize for the sound right now. I know it sounds a little bit echoey, or it might sound really echoey. This is just temporary. This is just for this episode, and we'll get back to our regular sound quality next time. Um, I'm alone in the studio today. Jumping in right into the Raw review, we had an interesting Raw, to say the least. Um, I couldn't believe what I seen at the end of Raw. It's just crazy, crazy, crazy Raw following TLC. Jumping right into it, we started the show with Stephen McMahon coming out to the ring. Uh, we all knew this was coming, talking about uh, her husband getting viciously attacked by Roman Reigns last night at after the main event. Um, she's basically saying that Roman Reigns is going to get fired. Roman Reigns comes out. And basically, he doesn't even care what his punishment is. Um, they both talk about uh, the McMahon family name and how Stephanie's telling Roman Reigns that he's a disgrace. And then he goes and saying that she's a disgrace. Triple H is a disgrace. And the whole McMahon name is a disgrace. Stephanie slaps Roman Reigns a bunch of times in the face out of retaliation. And then uh, basically tells him, I'm not going to be the one to fire you because my husband doesn't want me to. And then she says... The most unreal words I've ever heard. Her dad is on her way to the arena. Vincent Kennedy McMahon on his way to the ring to fire Roman Reigns. I'm like, oh my God, it's been like a year since we've seen Vince McMahon. Oh my God, I remember seeing him live. That was the craziest thing I've ever seen. He's unreal and he's on his way to the ring to fire Roman Reigns. So that would be later on in the night. Jumping right into the first match, we had Dean Ambrose, the new Intercontinental Champion, facing off against Dolph Ziggler, which was actually a pretty entertaining match. Uh, definitely a, this one of those, this was awesome, chanting type of match, as the crowd did it a couple times throughout this match. A lot of good spots. Um, there was no winner, as Kevin Owens was on a rampage, comes out to the ring and starts beating the crap out of both of them. He start, he pow, pow, power bombs uh, Ambrose twice. Basically leaving him in the middle of the ring uh, lifeless. And then Ziggler tries to defend Ambrose and then ends up getting powerbombed right on to Dean Ambrose. So it does look like, as my prediction from the last podcast, uh, Owens and Ambrose looks like they're going to have a rematch in the upcoming future. But it also kind of looks like Ziggler will be tied into it. I hope he does because he's got nothing going on right now. Then it would just be good to have him in a mid-card title feud. Moving on, we had... uh, Interesting match. Um, it started with R Truth and Bo Dallas. I'm like, this is kind of weird. You got two squashable type wrestlers facing each other right now. I'm like, okay, maybe they'll actually have a match out of this. But shortly uh, in the first minute of the match, we had a cut scene to the backstage area. Vince McMahon arriving, and I'm like, oh god, this is gonna be nuts. He's definitely gonna come out and kick these wrestlers out of the ring. Sure enough, he comes out and gets on the mic and tells literally Vix McMahon and Bo Dallas to get the hell out of the ring. I'm like, come on, man. How can you do that to these two guys? These guys hardly get any TV time as it is. They're about to have a match against each other, which kind of looked like it would have been somewhat entertaining. And then Vince just kicks him out of the ring. So Vince gets in the ring, basically says that he is going to fire Roman Reigns. Um, but he's going to say he's, he's going to make him sweat it out. And wait throughout the night. So he sets up one of the chairs at ringside and says he's just going to wait there all night. We come back for crucial break and literally nothing really happens. He goes back into the ring and says, all right, Roman Reigns, get the hell out of here. Um, Reigns gets to the ring and uh, Vince tells Reigns that he needs to get his hands and knees and apologize. Uh, Vince (laughs) and like Roman Reigns basically doesn't do shit. Vince McMahon said, at one time, I used to be able to make you do it, and basically takes off his jacket. The crowd goes nuts. Everyone's like, oh, shit, Vince McMahon's going to get physical. And then Sheamus comes out. Yay, the WWE champion Sheamus. Woo, everyone's excited. No. Okay, so Sheamus comes out. He's at the top of the ramp and asks Vince if he could, you know, have the honor of beating the crap out of Reigns and making him apologize. Uh, Sheamus even says he's so confident he's willing to put his title on the line, but Vince comes in and says there's no chance in hell that he's going to hap- that's going to happen tonight. Reigns asks Vince why not and basically makes fun of Vince's uh, whole grapefruits kind of thing, saying he doesn't have any grapefruits anymore. He has shoveled up little prunes. Um, 
He's basically saying, like, time has clearly passed Vince by, and Vince tells Reigns he has his match tonight, but if Reigns doesn't win the title, he's fired. And then Vince McMahon does something I didn't even expect would happen. I thought he was just going to walk out of the ring. He low-blowed Rick Roman Reigns, just flat-out kicked him in the nuts. I was like, Jesus, that was awesome. Like, this was definitely an unreal moment for Raw so far, and it's only the first hour of the show. It's crazy. So moving into it, um, we had the second match of the night. We had Alberto Del Rio and Rusev, basically the two members of the League of Nations faction that looks like it's still going. Um, it, it didn't really, they've started the faction and didn't really carry it through. Um, I didn't even see Wade Barrett tonight, so I don't know where the hell he is. I guess they're keeping him for SmackDown. But uh, moving on, they faced Ryback and Jack Swagger, kind of a weird tag team right there. It wasn't really that exciting of a match. Crowd seemed pretty bored throughout the entire match as well. Um, the winners ended up being Rusev and Del Rio as Rusev sneaked up behind Swagger and backstab him. And Rusev hits the running, I guess it's a Savati kick, he calls it, for the win. Uh, again, nothing really that exciting. Uh, I'm hoping to see maybe more stuff with the League of Nations in the future. If not, if it dies, then I'm not you know, that upset about it. So moving on, we had Tyler Breeze versus Neville. Um, before this match even starts, Miz comes out on the commentary desk and he has his own little uh, movie director kind of chair and big plastic megaphone yelling at Neville. Basically, he's basically trying to be Neville's mentor, but Neville's having none of it. So the Breeze and Neville match was all right. Um, Neville basically dominated most of it. Uh, he sets up the red arrow, hits a perfectly clean red arrow for the win. Nothing really too exciting in this match. And then Neville and uh, Miz are bickering at ringside. Um, I'm not sure where they're going with this, but uh, maybe even Neville turns uh, heel and ends up being and letting Miz be his mentor. You know, just like uh, when Damian Sandow was his mentor. So who knows? We'll see about that. But coming up after that, we had a crazy promo earlier night. I totally forgot to talk about by the ECW originals, the Dudleys, Rhino, and Tommy Dreamer. They had a crazy backstage promo, even showing little video clips of their days back in ECW since tonight's Raw was in Philly. So they challenged the Wyatt family to an extreme rules match. So that's going to be cool. So this is the match I'm going to talk about right now. And it's right after the Miz match or the, the Neville versus... Uh, Tyler Breeze match. See how exciting that was? I totally forgot about it. But moving into it, we had the Dudleys, Rhino, and Tommy Dreamer versus the Wyatts in an Extreme Rules match. This match was insane. It was chaotic. It was awesome. This is definitely this definitely brought back some ECW memories. Um, a lot of a lot of use of weapons everywhere on the earth. There's so much action. Again, it was just like last night. There's so much action in this match. It's so hard to like put your mind around it and keep up with the match. But there are a lot of good spots in this match. Um, there was one where Bubba Ray Dudley suplexed Harper onto the steel chair. I thought that looked pretty good. Um, and there was one where Rhino was on the ring apron and he got knocked down by Brain and went right through a table. Kind of looked like he really hurt his elbow there, but, you know, Rhino's a tough motherfucker. He, he, he can take it. Um, Bubba, then I think there was another spot. Uh, yeah, they set up the 3D again and 3 d someone through the table. I think it was Eric Rowan. Um... But, man, this match is just crazy. He even went out to the outside where uh, Strowman picked up Tommy Dreamer and Oklahoma stampede him right through the barricade. And it even it kind of looked like Tommy Dreamer got really, really hurt because he was screaming at the top of his lungs, and it was really like an awkward moment. But anyways, um, they did hit the 3D on Harper. Yeah, it was Harper that got 3 d through the table. Um, and then just ended up being a really crazy match. A lot of finishers right at the end. I didn't really see who was going to win this match. It ended up being the Wyatts burying the ECW originals again. I can't believe the Wyatts won here. I know they won last night, but I honestly thought they were going to let Bubba Ray Dudley, Rhino, and Tommy Dreamer win in Philly, like where ECW all started. But again, WWE buried them. God, it's just... This is nothing new to WWE when burying superstars in like their hometowns or like wherever they're from. It's just it's it's crazy how WWE gets away with doing this shit. But anyways, that was an unreal match. Moving on, we had the New Day celebration um, from their tag team match at TLC, which was an epic tag team match. Um, talked about in the TLC review it was insane. But the New Day are in the ring. Xavier Woods uh, comes on the mic and says that they are going to come out and celebrate. But uh, they weren't in the mood. And I'm like, uh-oh, here we go. What are they going to make fun of now? But New Day does something, and I, I was waiting for it. Like, I was waiting for it through this entire promo for them to break out. But it never happened. 
they're just like running still shots of the triple threat ladder match. I'm like, okay, okay, what are they going to make fun of now? Nothing. Just just Kofi Kingston ran down, like, uh, all the injuries he suffered last night. Um, like, Big E stated that, like, the match changed his perspective on things. And then they requested the Usos to come to the ring. So the Usos come to the ring. Kingston basically tells both of them that they are not here to fight. That they're not in shape to fight right now because they're hurting. Woods adds that the Usos earn the respect of the New Day. I'm like, okay, this is definitely going to make fun of them. So then Big E calls out the Lucha Dragons as well to come out. King puts over the Lucha Dragons. Like, man, this is just crazy. The Usos and the Lucha Dragons were being put over by the New Day. And it's not like they were kidding around. They were serious. It was like 100% serious. And then just the Lucha Dragons and Usos weren't, like, taking anything of it. And then even uh, Kalisto added that Xavier Woods threw the trumpet at him. And then Woods actually apologized, like, sincerely apologized. I'm like, okay, so maybe they're turning the new day face or something and then like the lucha dragons and usos still were not convinced and not having nothing of it so like the new day extended their hands to both teams the usos and lucha dragons accepted shook their hands and left the ring i'm like okay okay so something's gonna happen now and sure enough the new day didn't really do anything bad they just started celebrating in the ring i mean they're i mean they're being obnoxious but like it's not like they're making fun of the usos or Lucha Dragons, they they shook their hands and gave them props. But then, for some weird reason, they let the Usos and Lucha Dragons rush the ring and kick the shit out of the New Day. Like, like I, I don't understand it. That makes them look bad. Because even the crowd was booing the shit out of the Usos and the Lucha Dragons for beating the crap out of New Day. Because they, they didn't do anything wrong. I just don't understand. I didn't really understand the end of this promo, but... Whatever, I don't think this is the end of that feud either. I think these three teams are going to have another tag team rematch at the Royal Rumble. We'll see. Or they'll be inside the Royal Rumble match. We'll have to wait till then. Moving on, we had Brie Bella and Alicia Fox versus Charlotte and Becky Lynch. Um, really nothing to this match. I'm just waiting for something to do with Ric Flair as uh, at TLC. Uh, it looks like Charlotte is about to turn heel anytime now. And Ric Flair is basically showing the ropes on how to become the dirtiest player in the games to his daughter. Um, but this was an all right match. And then uh, there was a one point near the end of the match where Becky Lynch went for a submission, turned around, and then as Alicia Fox was bouncing off the rope, uh, Ric Flair slew-footed her. Becky Lynch didn't see that they cheated as she put in the disarmer and won via submission. And that's how they won again. Another dirty win, I guess, by Charlotte since she was with the team with Becky Lynch in this match. But Becky Lynch had no idea. I really sense that Charlotte's going to be heel soon. So we'll have to see what that maybe will happen at the Royal Rumble finally. But anyways, moving into the main event of Raw. And this is where the crazy shit happens, ladies and gentlemen. The World Heavyweight title match. If Roman Reigns doesn't win, he is fired. This was a crazy match. Um, definitely as good as a match as they did last night at TLC, but without weapons. Um, near the end of the match, Rain call, Reigns calls for the Superman punch, but Sheamus catches him and power bombs him. Yet another close near fall, and then Sheamus locks in this like modified death lock, which looked pretty cool. So Reigns manages to get to the ropes and break the hold. So Reigns headbutts Sheamus and hits a Superman punch. So after he hits that Superman punch. Uh, goes for the count. Vince McMahon comes in and pulls the ref out of the ring before he counts to three. So in the whole confusion, uh, Sheamus hit the white noise as Vince is talking to the referee. So Sheamus tosses Reigns out of the ring, which allows Rusev and Del Rio, the two members of uh, the League of Nations, looks like they're still strong here, kick the shit out of Roman Reigns. But then Roman Reigns overpowers and Superman punches Rusev and Sheamus and Vince McMahon one after the other, and then as Roman Reigns gets back in the ring, Sheamus is calling for the bro kick and runs right into a spear, and then Roman Reigns jumps on Sheamus and counts, and it's a three count. I can't believe this. We just saw a freaking World Heavyweight Championship title turn on Raw. I don't even remember the last time this even freaking happened on Raw, but you're a new champion, and it was legit because I was waiting for like 15 minutes after this to see what was going to happen, if they were going to overturn it or something, but no, Vince was freaking knocked the fuck out at ringside, and you're a new champion, Roman Reigns. So this just changes everything because I thought after TLC 
that, okay, it's definitely going to be Triple H, Roman Reigns for the title at WrestleMania. But now they put the title on Roman Reigns. Does this mean he's going to hold on to it till WrestleMania? And if so, if he does face uh, Triple H, is it going to be for the title? I mean, that could be cool. And in a way, it couldn't be because you're not going to see Triple H win the title. It's going to stay with Roman Reigns. Or is Roman Reigns going to lose it before WrestleMania, which I can kind of see. And I can kind of see Triple H screwing him out of that title and then causing them to feud for a WrestleMania match. But, oh, my God, crazy Raw tonight, guys. Philly definitely got sent home happy with this. Um, anyways, uh, we got a lot of stuff happening this week. We have SmackDown review. We have the NXT TakeOver London review. Yes, we're going to do a review for that. It's happening on Wednesday, and I'll get it out as soon as it's done. Um, this should be a good TakeOver special, as I'm excited to see Finn Balor versus Samoa Joe and a lot of other matches on the card, especially my favorite up-and-coming NXT star. I hope he gets called up in the next year as well, Baron Corbin. He's such an extraordinary gifted wrestler that I can't wait. I love his finishing move. I can't wait for him to get called up. So, yep, a lot of good things happening this week, guys. Other than that, that's it for the Raw Review this week. I am your host, Kyle Masters, as always, the greatest host. And that's it.